Tell me what you want to be when you grow up. A troll. All right, troll. Very, very nice. I want to be a scientist. A scientist. Very important. What do you can be when you grow up? Drummer. Drummer. I like that. I'm a drummer. Worker. A worker? Where are you going to work? Benji confessed, sorry for calling you out, but Benji confessed to writing that song and having tears on his notebook because that song was written with power, with Holy Spirit power. And you can tell, you can feel it. And I just love that. So remember, whenever you're worshiping God, you can have that Holy Spirit power just because of the words that are on the page. It's so awesome. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for today. God, thank you for an amazing worship set. God, where we can sit here and just praise you. God, I don't want this feeling to end. Don't let this feeling leave the room. God, give us your power and your presence in our hearts right now, God, through the rest of this service, through the rest of our week, God. Let us walk with you and never forget you because you never forget us. God, we love you and we praise you. Amen. At this time, we're going to invite our kids to get on out of here. I actually get to teach kids church today. It's been a long time since I've done that, but I am excited to teach them today. We are talking about the Holy Spirit. And you guys try teaching the Holy Spirit to some kids. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we're excited. Um, it's going to be a good time. While I have a moment... Um, before we're doing our offering, as you guys get your tithe and your offering ready, we are going to, um, I guess they're already passing it out. I haven't even prayed over it, guys. Jeez. All right. Anyway, while you guys are getting that ready, I'm taking a moment to plug my new women's group on Tuesday nights. It's been going on for a while. Uh, we meet at 7 o'clock. We just ended a series called Keep It Shut, and it was about the tongue and how you needed to watch what you say. How many of you guys are guilty about not watching what you say? Yeah. It's called Fervent, and it is a study on prayer. How many of you guys think about those moments where you forget to pray. Oh yeah, sorry, thanks God, I forgot to say something. Or think about those moments where you are down and out having the worst week of your life and that's when you finally turn to God to ask him for something, right? Because you can confess that that's honesty. We've all had those moments. None of us are better than the other because we haven't been there. We've all been there. Every one of us has been there. But this book is a radical, life-changing tool. And so here's the thing. God gives us three things in life to make our life more joyful, more effective for his kingdom. Here they are. Ready? The word. Yeah, right? Everyone agree? Prayer, right? Our relationship with him. And then finally, each other. But this book, Fervent, this book is a, a radical, life-changing book. It is going to be amazing. So what I want is I want to challenge every one of our women to step it out and come on out to this group. I know it's hard. Some of you that are away during the week and aren't always here, I'm going to do some extra maybe Facebooky things to try to get you involved, maybe do some Facebook Lives and things like that because I want you guys to be a part of it. But this book has changed my prayer life, and I want it to change yours because this this book is practical. This book is action. How many of you guys know that our life can't just be life without action, right? Our church is called what? Go. Oh, it's not stand church. It's not sit church. It's go church. Our life is in action. And this book is about prayer in action and putting that faith into your life. And so if you're a male and you don't have a woman to pray over your household, then, you know, come join us. I don't really care. I really don't. I'm going to open it up because I think this book is that important. It really, really is. So for the first time, Cameron Bartlett, I'm going to allow men to come to my women's group. Cameron's told me before that he wants to come because he thought we were crafting, right? Am I right? <laughs> I'm kind of, I think that's kind of true. Anyway, he thought we were crafting, but we're not. We're going to be actively praying. So this week, we're going to be talking about the importance of prayer and what the Bible says about it. And then starting next week, we are going to put our prayers into action. They're going to be thought out, and they're going to be strategic, and we're going to battle that devil together, okay? Are you excited about that? Poor Chad. He didn't even know that I took the stage and took over and started preaching about prayer. So we're going to do it. Guess what? There's a real sermon coming for you. 
If you uh, did not get a chance to give out your offering, I'm going to pray over it again, and you can find me in the back. I'll gladly take it to where it needs to go. And um, there is an option to text to give as well. Our number, 84321. You're welcome to do that. So let's pray, and then we are going to have the best sermon ever on all kinds of things because steps aren't sexy is what Pastor Chad said last week. And he's right. They're not. They're not fun. They're not sexy. And you guys can all go have a Stairmaster for the week, right? But this is going to be a great sermon, so let's pray over it. God, thank you so much for who you are and what you give us. God, I pray that as we give back to you, God, that you bless our offering, God. You bless our faith, God. You bless our prayers, God. And that you continually bless us, God, for us living for you. God, I pray for this sermon. God, I pray that you your word is spoken true through Pastor Chad today, God, and that we are blessed through you. Lord, we praise you. Amen. Oh, I got the power on, mm, and I sound like a munchkin. Do I not sound like a munchkin today? Turn me down a little bit. I'm hot, and I'm not talking about the mic. Anyway, today is my official tribute to Run DMC. Thank you very much. I, um, yes, let's welcome everybody watching Facebook Live right now. The tens of thousands will be watching this. Good to see you guys. Y'all remember the Arsenio Hall show way back in the day? And now he's had the people to the side and they called them some crazy name. By the end of the service, I'm going to come up with something crazy for you two guys. All right, this is my whatever group over here. Um, wow, God is awesome. Terry Hayes, where are you at? Let me see your hand. She is live in this church today. Wow. The last time she was live, I didn't even acknowledge her being present. And she drives the furthest, I can tell you that. Um, it is so awesome to see everybody. So this week, um, we're starting a new little series. It's funny because Father's Day, if you were watching, people watched and listened when I make a mistake. It's amazing. I say so many good things during a sermon. It ought to be illegal. And then the one thing, God forbid, I declared Father's Day three weeks early. <laughs> everybody was flipping out. And so... Um, Father's Day is not this Sunday, obviously, but what, um, what is happening, though, is I'm going to do a three-week series, and it, it just happens to be, this year we've been talking about, what is the theme for this year? Somebody say it real quick. It starts with an R. What? Yeah. Rhythm. We need to get into a rhythm with our life. We need to get into a rhythm with things, and it's so difficult to get into rhythm, amen? amen. Difficult to get into rhythm. It's easy to get into out-of-sorts rhythm, but it's not easy to get into a good, spiritual, godly rhythm. And so this week I was, I, was, I was praying about, you know, what do I preach about? <clears throat> Pardon me, because we're kind of in a transition before summer church begins. We have Father's Day coming up, and everybody's kind of gearing up for summer. And I want to continue on rhythm. And last week we were talking about, in the last really couple weeks, the steps of God that are ordered are not sexy. They're not easy. They're not, I love what Edie said, and I commented on Facebook, um, Stairmaster, man, that, that is so, Stairmasters are not the funnest thing to do. Taking a step is not easy, especially when you know what the outcome is. Have you ever um, had a test, or maybe some of you, you've bought a home in your first home. You never will forget buying the first home. And, and the, by the time you got into the house, you were exhausted, more than likely, from the steps that you had taken to get this loan. Amen? 
<clears throat> unless you're like Brian and just pays cash for everything because he's rich. Um, <clears throat> now, we all hate those people, don't we? I mean, let's be honest. It's like, oh, you bought a car cash. Hmm. I hate you. You didn't haggle? No, I just went in there and paid cash. I wrote a check. If you know any of those people today, invite them to church next week. <laughs> I don't know any of those people unless you're sitting in this room and you're, you and I are going to hang out. I get free coffee, all right? So <clears throat> I was thinking about it. I was praying about what to do. And so, and I have to believe that I have to practice what I preach. And so what I'm wearing is a, a great example of a step. This week we stepped towards going to the gym and working out and losing weight. Amen? Amen. Yes. I just didn't make it to the gym this week. <laughs> but what I did do was I bought the coolest outfit on the planet. In 2016, I do not know that I wore tennis shoes. I mean, tennis shoes are a vital part of going to the gym. I don't know. In 2016, I know in 2017, with the exception of Lexi's wedding, I have not worn socks in over a year, okay, except if I do a wedding. And uh, I, I, I don't know that I wore socks to your daughter's wedding because I wore my sweater. I usually go without socks when I wear shoes. So chances are that wedding was sockless. By the way, if you want to get married, I will never wear a suit again. Brian and Amy ruined me. I'm wearing my sweaters, and that's it. So no suits. I, I burned it. So this week we went and spent a god-awful amount of money. I mean awful amount of money. And so I started looking at the night gear. And I'm a guy, I like cotton still. I don't like the new stretchy whatever. It makes, I'm hairy and it just, it just when, I, when I run it kind of goes up here. By the time it's over I'm wearing a half shirt. And I don't want that. Because I don't want lust. Listen folks, those... Men and women at the gym go goo goo eye when I walk in. They stare, and I'm like, I know, it's all real. This is not implants, folks. This is real. I still got a slice of pizza from when I worked at Pizza Hut in 1989, all right? So I'm in there, and I'm, I'm working. I, I'm working at, get, I'm literally sweating in Dick's Sporting Goods store. I am sweating. I'm like, this counts. Chalk it up. I made it to the gym. It's a gym-like building, and so I'm here. And so I, I have got my clothes, and I laid them all out. I got Adidas shirt. No kidding. An Adidas jacket, Adidas shoes, because I can't mix match the brands. <laughs> Adidas shorts, and I almost wore those today. I kid you not. I got an Adidas headband and a flat rim Adidas hat. And when I go to the gym, it is going to be dropping it like it's hot, all right? So I consider this. I'm practicing what I preach because I actually made the effort to go out. And so I thought, this week, I need to take it to another level. I'm actually going to take the tags off the clothes and put them on. So today... As a matter of fact, we were on the back porch. We watched all of our sport, all of our TV. I watched on the back porch. I noticed that Helen had already taken my headband out because I, I sweat. I don't have a lot of hair up here, in case you didn't notice. And so I have the sweat. She's actually wearing that on the back porch. So every item now has been worn for the glory of God, taking steps. That's bad when you have to wear a sweatband to watch TV, though. You know, you may need an intervention. Intervention. But today I'm excited about you being here. I'm excited about summer being here. I'm excited about the transitions of life. And, and today I just want to share for, with just for a few moments about God being with us. It's something that is very difficult. I, I put on Facebook a couple of days ago, I think it was, it may have been yesterday, that you have ever, have you ever been in a room and you feel like, it could be a room full of people, it could be a shopping mall, it could be a school classroom, and you feel like you're the only one there. You feel so distant. I see people all the time on Facebook, and I read their posts, that they're going through something, and I, and I try not to preach, I try not to pre preach social media, but a lot of times we do pour our hearts out there, and I, I've had people just, I've, I've seen people just want to talk, just anybody, hey, does anybody have anything they want to talk about? And <clears throat> we live in this world full of people, think about this world full of people. I don't know how many people there are on planet Earth, but full of people. But yet we completely feel alone. Whether we're married, whether we're divorced, whether we have, have friends, we just feel, I don't know, melancholy. And we go through our life, though, 
and we hit these walls. Everyone in here today, you are going to hit a wall. You're going to hit a wall of resistance at some point in your life when you begin to do something different than what you're doing. Uh, have you ever noticed that you have, um, maybe, maybe you come to church and this is new, you're new into church, or you're, you're new into this. I tell people, you need to give God three straight weeks in a row. If this is your first Sunday and you're filling us out, I'm going to encourage you, come two more Sundays in a row. Not because we want to hook you in, but I, I, I think that if you're, if you're starting a new step in a new life, you need to put some things together. And always the first week, it's exciting and nervous. The second week, you're like, eh, I don't know. By the third week of doing anything, working out or trying a new diet, you need to give yourself, what is it, 21 days takes to break a habit, break a cycle in your life. And so it's the same way with God. I was talking to my Helen this morning, my wife, and I said, do you ever feel like we work for God? And this is really a message for our church staff. And Edie's working in Children's Today. Hayden's is Pentecost Sunday, so of course he's celebrating with Nanny today. And there are tongues of fire going on wherever they are. And um, he's, he's not here, but our church staff a lot of times and our volunteers and our leadership and those of you that serve in the church I want to be an encouragement to you today. Sometimes it feels like we're working for God. We're working for God. We're toiling for God. We're giving to God. But we've lost that intimacy with God. You may be in church and you say, Pastor, I've been in church for years. And I've kind of hit this wall where, you know what? I go to church, but it's really because I just go. But I'm not growing anymore. It's been a long time since I felt and experienced the presence and the newness of God. Helen and I this year celebrated 21 years. We're finally growing up. 21. We're finally adults in the marriage. Amen? And what keeps our relationship, we have an amazing relationship. But we still argue sometimes about some of the same things that it keeps us young, I guess. We, we argue about little things like, so who did you first kiss? Oh, did you like it? They kissed better than me. Well, they had zits on their face. They were 14, you know. Um, that was gross. Pardon me. But you, you, you have to keep an intimacy with whatever relationship you're in. You have to keep a closeness. But with God sometimes, because we can't see, taste, smell, or touch him, he seems so far away. And if we're not careful in time, we seem so far away from God ourselves. We've come through the motions, we've come through the things, we've come through some trials, we've come through some tears, but then it's just old again. We're not, we lack that excitement of what it once was. I see people all the time when they're praying for a miracle, and the miracle happens. Man, this week we had a miracle in our church, Nancy Pants, God bless her. I went to visit her in the hospital, and they said, well, okay, I'm here to see Nancy. They said, what's her last name? And I said, Pants, I don't even know. <laughs> I call her Nancy Pants so much. And Helen's like, it's Taylor. And I'm like, I knew that, Taylor. She's on the phone right Hey, Nancy Pants, give Nancy a big hand. Listen, God has healed her of colon cancer. I mean, they got this thing out. Give God a shout of praise, man. Zipping through the surgery. I went to see her, and she's like, she would have been at church today if she weren't strapped to a bed. I'm like, God bless you. She's like, I, I went to see her uh, Friday. She's like, I don't think I'm going to be at church. So I think I'll still be in the hospital. I'm like, Nancy, that's no excuse. All right? <laughs> but, but you see this, this freshness. God, and, and, and when you're in this, you're believing God for a miracle. And think about, but if you've been believing God for something, this pursuit of God is so intense. But when it's over... It's like, well, I got the miracle. It's, it's kind of like, well, I got what I needed from you, God. And all God wants is us. We've all seen the, in, in, the, um, in the chapel, in the Catholic Church, the, the uh, Michelangelo's, what is that, creation? Where the hands are going towards one another? Anybody know anything about art in here? What is it? The creation of Adam. The creation of Adam. I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> I know the fingers. I know that. But we've all seen that picture. And it's a beautiful picture of God reaching out to man and man reaching up to God. God wants your reach. God is within reach. And God wants to be with us all the time. God wants to be present in our lives. But do we want him present in our lives? Think about what we do during a day. Do you want God to see everything you do? And the thing is, we, we may say, well, as long as I'm not talking to God, he can't see what I'm doing. He sees you when you're sleeping. 
He sees you when you're awake. He knows you've been good for goodness sake, all right? He is like Santa, but real. Not that he's not real, guys. Santa's real, okay? We have little kids in here. Parents haven't. You shouldn't be in Go Church today, all right? Some little kid has just got on their mom's Facebook feed, and now they're crying. They got to explain things. <laughs> no, Santa's real, guys. I know, thank you. God gives us dreams, and Pastor Chad shatters them. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 4, four there we go, 4. Let's try to read the Bible. We'll get into the spiritual aspect. We can tell Mr. Nicky's not here today. It's all gone to shenanigans. All right, Matt, Deuteronomy chapter 4, 29. Go there real quick. But from there, you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him. If you search after him with all of your what? Heart and soul. You'll seek. You ever notice you will find what you're looking for? Those song looking for love in all the wrong places, you're going to find what you're looking for. Are you looking for God today? Are you looking for the intimate relationship with God? Is God present with us? If today you're battling, um, you're battling some emptiness. If you're battling some insecurity, or maybe you just you just don't know. I'm going to tell you what I want you to press further to God. Years ago, I felt this way with, and my dad noticed this, he picked this up, and I was just really, really antsy, and I was really nervous, and my dad said, son, is everything okay? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, no, no, it's not, and he had a great gift of discernment, and he says, son, I'm, I'm telling you what God is speaking to me over your life right now, and I'm going to speak this to every single one of you in this room that you've ever felt distant from God, and he said, son, God is calling you. God is calling out to you. And I, and, I, and I begin to break. And I say, Dad, I can't feel God. I don't know if I'm a Christian right now. I was about 16, 17 years old. And that was when God was giving me a call of ministry on my life. What if we, as Christians, could discern and see when our brothers or sisters are in need and we go to them before they hit the wall and crash and burn or burn out? What if we take a step to help somebody get into rhythm? I'm going to tell you what, the best way to get rhythm in your life is to begin to pour rhythm, begin to pour something into someone else's life. When you begin to pour out of yourself into someone else, God then begins to fill you back with something new. But God cannot take a vessel that is so stagnant and add anything new unless something is poured out. And when we go to God and we go to him and we say, God, I, I thank you that I want to be with you. I want to be in your presence. I'm crying out to you. And when my dad gave me this advice, he said, I want you to do this. He said, I want you to seek God. I want you to pray. I want you to press through. And I'm like, well, I'm going to church. I'm playing the drums. I'm volunteering. I, I didn't have a girlfriend at the time, so I didn't have any of those fatal distractions. And I said, God... Is that all God wants? And I went to a, a room that we had in the house that was kind of a, it was a little annex of the house. And I went in there, and I'll never forget, I just began to stand in this room and walk around the little ping pong table. And I'd walk around the ping pong table, and I'd begin to pray. And I would just simply say, God, God, I don't know what, I don't know what you want to do in my life, but, but God, do it. Use me. The best place you can be with God is in a place of servanthood. A place where it's not about you, it's not about what you're going through, but it is simply about God. In Matthew chapter number 1, verse number 22 through 23, Jesus came into this world. This is how much God wants to hang out with us. You think about this in Genesis 3, 9. When God, he came down to the earth and he became, all he did was create man to worship and fellowship with and God one day came walking through the garden, his presence, his spirit, his being was there in the garden with Adam and Eve. And he said, Adam, where are you? I want to talk. Do we not realize that every day of our lives, God wants to talk? But pastor, I can't hear him. I don't know where he is. He's right in here. The best way to talk to God, the best way to communicate is through his scripture, through his word. Begin to say, God, I thank you that you gave me this word. God, I thank you that you said, if I just seek you. God, I seek you today. Let me tell you what, I want to encourage you over the next week to seek God over what you're seeking right now. 
If there's one thing in your life that you immediately is your go-to, I want you to do this, and we're going to apply this in our life. I want us to go to that, I want us to go to God place instead of to that place. And I want you to see in one week what God begins to do in your life. If the moment you feel depressed, if the moment you feel discouraged, you feel like doing this bad habit or, or maybe it's destructive behavior or maybe you just implode and you close up, I want you to do something opposite of that. I want you to seek God and I want you to share God's love and God's grace with people. Because in those moments, in those intimate moments, in those intimate times, you'll find that God will do something extraordinary. In one of the loneliest times of my life, God called me to be a preacher. God called me, you're going to pastor. You're going to preach to people. First thing I said was, oh, God, no, that's for old people. No way am I doing that. I'm young. I'm awesome. And then, you know what's great? I haven't changed. I'm still young and awesome. <laughs> Amen. I like that. Whoever that is. Wow, Terry's my favorite. And you know what you are? You are young and you are awesome. And I don't care how old you are. It does not matter. God has a call on your life. Just like Nancy Pants. She's been through so many sicknesses and, and problems and things. And the great thing is God is not finished with her yet. And God is not finished with you yet. When you make a place of intimacy for him. Amen? God wants to be with us. Matthew chapter number 1, verse 22 through 23. If you don't believe it, go here. Jesus came into this earth. This is what he came in here for. I love this. Verse number 22. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin will conceive her and bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel. Everybody say Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus came into this world, not to condemn the world, but to save it. Amen. Think about this. Jesus came because a prophet had a word from God that back in Genesis, sin and Satan came in and destroyed it and goofed it all up. But God's sole purpose was to create humanity, to live and worship him, to communicate. All God did, number one, was he wanted to communicate with someone. And he created us in his image. And the man took a bite of while he, he bit off more than he could chew. And immediately, the relationship became tainted. But God's love never ran out. Every one of us have had that first broken heart, that first broken love, that thing that just... Boy, you can't imagine that. I told y'all about mine way back years ago. I was nine years old and fell in love with probably one of the ugliest girls on the planet. But she, she lived in an ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down. But I thought, oh, she was beautiful because she was a teenager. Man, that made it. You know, you're nine years old and you fall in love with a 17-year-old girl and this is going to be it. This is for life and it's going to be awesome. Although the problem that we had with the age difference is she lived in another state and I couldn't drive. But she had a boyfriend, too. That's kind of the trifecta. If you're nine years old and you don't have a car, you live in another state, and the 17-year-old girl has a boyfriend, chances are you need to go onto another pond and throw your pole. Something's got to happen. And I'll never forget, I cried from New Mexico all the way to Eufaula, Oklahoma. Albuquerque to Eufaula, Oklahoma for this girl. And you know what? God, when we lose our relationship with him, he just waits. And for thousands of years, he has made this, Jesus came to this world to love and to save us. 2,000 years ago, he brought in his son because you know what? The covenant had been broken. The covenant had been broken and tainted that our relationship with God was a little bit of a breakup. And humanity chose to go its own way and do its own thing. But God says, you're still my creation. You're still my beloved. One day I'm going to set this thing straight. One day I'm going to set this thing right. One day I'm going to do this. And the prophet said, God is going to give us a son. And that son's name simply means God with us. 2,000 years ago, a virgin gave birth to a child. 
And that child just simply says, God wants to be with you. And let me tell you, don't believe a lie of Satan that says no one's ever been through this before. No one's ever been through this trial before. No one's ever been through this addiction before. No one's ever been through this marital problem before. No one's ever been through this loneliness before. No one's ever, 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 ever. That is the biggest lie from Satan. Know this, that you're not alone, that you're not forsaken, and that God is with you everywhere you go. All he wants you to do is seek him. If we seek him, amen. If we seek God, seek after him, he'll find us. Summer's coming. Don't forget to seek God in everything that you do. God loves and cares for you with all of his heart. God has a plan, and God just simply wants you to be present with him. Our worship team can come back up. When we begin to worship God, when we begin to serve God, we begin to lift our hands, we begin to lift our voices, we're taking a step towards that direction of intimacy. This morning as we worship in this service, as we close out our our, our service this Sunday, I want you to be at the place that you're hungry after God, that you hunger and you thirst. There's a story a few years ago. A pastor was on an airplane. The pastor was on an airplane. He was on his way to preach and do the things for God. And he sat down by a businessman, and the businessman sat there, and he had his laptop open, and there's a little child's picture on the front. and, And the pastor made a mistake by asking, hey, is that your son? Opened a can of worms. The businessman said, yeah, that, this is my son. This picture was taken three months ago He's a, when he was 11 months old. The man began to scroll through picture after picture after picture like a proud dad would. And the pastor was like, man, I'll be honest. Everything he shared, the, the guy, the dad would tell him, he says, oh, my son walked at this, at this age, and I'll never forget his first steps. This is where we were at. And the t- first word he said was this. And the first time he started eating food was this. And when he sat up, he was this. And, he, and the pastor was sitting there, and he's like, I wish this guy would just stop talking about his kid. I wish he'd just shut up. And the guy kept going on and on. And, and the pastor was like, you know what? My son is really a little cute that kid and my my son is actually was more advanced than this guy there's nothing extraordinary about this guy's son and so finally the plane was getting ready to land and the pastor said so um how long have you been away from your son and, and, and the guy went i can't wait to get home to see him i'm on my way home i'm gonna give him a hug we're gonna have so much fun i'm gonna play with him i just cannot wait to see my son and the pastor said, so how long has it been since you've seen your son when's the last time you saw him he said, yesterday. Yesterday. And the pastor thought, he would have thought he had been away from his son for weeks with a love and excitement to see him. You know that's our Father in heaven? Today, God's in the throne. And he looks over at his right hand and he says, see, they get, they're getting it with us. You, you went into this world so they could be with us. You went into this world. It's Pentecost Sunday. Holy Spirit, they can feel us. Whenever they begin to call on my name, they feel us. They're with us. But if we believe the lies from Satan that says you're alone, you've never... Listen, you have God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. All we have to do is say... God, I love you. God, I want to be in your presence. Because in a moment, we're there with God. In a moment, we can just put our shackles down, our pain down. And God says, hey, church. Hey, children. I'm so proud of you today. You witnessed for me. You gave for me. You served for me. You're with us. You're not alone. You've got the Trinity, the Godhead right here. And I'm going to tell you what. No matter what Satan throws at you. This week, I don't care what he throws, resistance and walls. You stand firm that, you know what? I'm with God and God is with me. Eternity past, eternity present, eternity future. All time is with me. All power is with me. When I just simply call on the name of Jesus, God can break every chain. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, church. If we just begin to get, if we just begin to gather in his presence, put on a worship song, open your Bible and say, God, I thank you. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I want to tell you what today, 
It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter where you think you're going. There is a great God in heaven who has a throne room filled with His presence ready to pour down on His people to just simply humble themselves and seek God with everything they do. Amen? Hallelujah. Stand to your feet this morning and give God, the creator of the universe, a big hand clap and shout of praise. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 God, we love you. God, to be in your presence. God, I thank you that we are with you. God, I thank you today. God, we are with you. Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Close your eyes. Everybody watching on Facebook. Let's, let's watch and see what God's going to do. When we forget about where we're at, heading into surgery she had that song in her in her in her heart and her spirit about with the breath in my lungs I worship you I give to you I love you with every breath that we have in our being I want you to release that stress that load of heaviness right now if you're watching on Facebook I want you to just right now just close your eyes and just God, I thank you. God, I thank you. God says, I want you to be with us today. I want you to be with the Father. I want you to be with the Son. I want you to be with the Holy Spirit. I want you to be with us. Emmanuel came. Jesus came. He wants you to be with us. You're joining a team that will not waver, that will not shake, that has never lost the battle and never will. Because the end of the book says, Jesus said, it is finished. Whatever you have in your life, whatever strain you have, whatever stress you have, God is with us. You're going to declare it. You're going to walk on it this week. There will not be nightmares. There will not be past. There will not be confusion. There will not be addiction that can stop what with us is going to do. Because you're not alone. You're with God, the Almighty, the Prince of Peace, the Morning Star, the Bright Son of God. You are with Him every single day when we seek after God in His presence. God, after his gifts, God, I thank you today. If today you have a need and you're on Facebook, I want you to write down, type it in that, that, that little box at the bottom, and we're going to pray with you. We're going to believe God with you. Folks, this summer is going to be the hottest summer of your life. You're going to be so red hot with God because you're taking steps that are not easy, that are not painful. But you're going to begin to take some steps that are ordered by God. Step number one is you give, give a place to God every single day in your life. Every single day in your life. God, this is my time with us. This is our time together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we want to be with you. If you're in this room today, if you're on Facebook, you're alive watching on YouTube. If you've never invited Jesus into your heart, I want you to know right now it's your night. It's your time, your day. I want you to lift up your hand right now. If you say, Pastor, pray for me. I need Jesus. I want you to be honest today. How many of you have ever felt lonely? I want you to lift up your hand right now. I've got mine up. I've been in a room full of pastors and I feel like the smallest person in the room. I feel like I could fall through a crack and no one would know I even exist. Let me tell you what today, you're going to get free from that garbage. You're going to get free from that. Insecurity is going to be broken in the name of Jesus. We're going to break some walls. We're going to break some things today. You say, Pastor, I don't know how to witness. You are a witness. You coming to church, you believing in Christ, you're a witness. Don't you let the devil tell you, if you don't have a pulpit, if you don't, listen, God today is going to show you that he wants to be with you in your every single day life. God, I thank you. Father, we worship you today. Everybody just lift up your hands. I'll just say this. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my home. Jesus, be with me. I rebuke every lie, every lie from Satan. I love you. I love you.
Father, we thank you today that we've got a holy trinity. That we have a holy trinity. We have angels in heaven that outnumber the stars. Father, we thank you today that we are never alone. God, instead of seeking out to social media or to even co-workers, that are going to leave us empty or maybe relationships sacrificing our faith sacrificing our purity sacrificing our holiness we aren't going to go to that anymore our go to is not going to be addiction or sex or gossip or slander or lying but God to you God to you first find the spirit of torment right now in the name of Jesus. I find worry in the name of Jesus and thank God for clarity. Father, I thank you who the Son has set free is free indeed. I find fake falsehood religion. I find it in the name of Jesus. Arrogance, I find you in the name of Jesus. Rude behavior, we find it in the name of Father, we thank you today. God, you are so good. God, I thank you today that you are Father. To those of us that have no father, to those of us that have maybe a father that was worthless, God, you are great. God, I love you. God, I love you. Some of you right now during this worship, your loneliness has fallen off. And you're going to feel the presence of God. Receive it. 